Right, it is the 7th of February, which is just ridiculous. And we are back, lovely Bryce and I are back with the amazing Mark Atwood um, for part two of Discover Your Passions. Because on part one, we got so carried away, talking with so many different things, we left loads still to talk about. So how are you doing, Mark? In interesting is the word. Ooh. Mm. I, I, you know, I've been chipper for two years, and then this weekend... It all hit me like a Canadian truck convoy and um, just the magnitude of everything. It's not actually happened to me very often, but the magnitude of everything that's going on is just, I'm ready. I'm done. I'm ready for this to be over. Same. I was just telling our mutual friend, Stephanie, that I'm, I'm done. And guys, I'm going to apologize. I told Catherine they're doing some yard work outside. If it gets loud, I'm going to mute myself while they go past the window. But uh, city living, you know, just got to deal with this stuff sometimes. But um, but um, yeah, I feel done, too. I'm so ready for now. Here's a question. Can I propose this to you guys? Like we know we know that we're on a, a fraudulent uh, calendar. We'll just say it that way. And I, we have heard that or I have heard that the this weekend coming up, the 11th through the 13th, is technically what is supposed to be the end of January on a, a more realistic calendar, although we know January is also a made up month. So do we think that anything uh, regarding timelines is that they're going to have to meet at a certain point in a timeline in order to pull the plug and make the flip? What do you guys think about that? <laughs> okay, we're both going oh my god well just a quick one for me i mean i i just think when you were saying mark and you bryce about you're ready for it i did as well i so with you this weekend i don't know what what's gone on this weekend but when I, everyone was sending me all the stuff about bloody queenie and um uh, and also um about loads of channelers saying that oh they're going to put us into another global lockdown and everything i was like F -f sake you know stop it stop all this talking about this crap just say no just say no just get on with it we cannot for me it's just like it's all very well saying oh it's the good guys that are going to do it this time sod off don't want any of them to do it to us i just yeah so there's obviously some big energy shifts that are affecting us all but timelines too much for my little brain what it's wild it, that's not yeah, sorry, we got some gremlins there, some freezing. It's it is <clears throat> the timeline thing. I'm no expert. I'm not a time traveller. Or well, maybe I am. I don't know. <laughs> um yeah, I've got I've got nothing really useful to say there, apart from the fact that it kind of makes sense. Mm. It feels yeah. it feels like it makes sense, but I don't really know why. Well, it's interesting, and we were going to talk a lot about paranormal, and I know recently I've had more experience with like what we now call off-worlders, which before we probably called them ETs or aliens. I've had more personal experiences now, and from what I've learned um, from people who are friend Taylor Moon, for, who are more c connected to that galactic world, is that you know we look at things in terms of dates, whereas that is just like a three-dimensional man-made thing. Whereas they're looking at things in terms of portals. Now we know that um, the Lyran uh, constellation, I believe a Pleiadian, like a lot of these different other homes will say have also been affected by this group as well in the past. And that's why this battle is so huge. It's not just us. It's more, more galactic as well. And while they're on our side, because we've all dealt with this, this group of people are energies, whatever they are. And, but what I've learned is they're looking at things through terms of going through different portals and we go through different portals in our lifetime. And most of the time we, we don't even realize it, but apparently I could be wrong, but from what I understand, we're in a portal right now. And I, I see it almost like a hallway. And by the time we get to the end of the hallway, it's done. It has, it has to flip. And so that's why I, when I heard that, that concept about the timelines, I was like, maybe that's what they're saying is that we're coming towards the end of this type of galactic portal that we have to go back to the original, the original calendar, whatever that is, whether that's the Zodiac, whatever you want to call it, which again, is very hard, I think, for a human brain to process because our world is so different than the, the we're in a very heavy density to actually comprehend that. But we know the Super Bowl, and I'm not a sports person, but here in America, the Super Bowl is this coming up Sunday, which is like two weeks later than it normally is. And we know that there was a post from the military back channel a while ago talking about the Super Bowl. So I don't know. 
to something interesting. Well, nothing would surprise me. I can't remember if on the last show we did, did we talk about UFO encounters? No. We touched on it briefly, so that's why we want to talk about it today. <laughs> yes. Okay. So did I, did I tell you about the ship I saw last year? I think so. Yeah. I have yes. touched on that, yeah. Yeah, cause that, that, so that's my grounding point because I know what I saw. Mm-hmm. And what I saw was unbelievable. It was extraordinary. Um, so, I, you know, I know that this isn't... I mean, I've done a lot of ayahuasca as well and I've had lots of images and visions over the years and uh, fights with demons, real mm-hmm. ones, physical ones. Same, yes. And, you know, actual things on my back. Um so I know, I you know I know. So that keeps me like chipper normally. But what the energy the last few weeks has been really biz- well, maybe the last couple of months has been really bizarre because, especially when it comes to like the galactic stuff. So I'm, I'm I try to stay open minded about everything, right? Mm-hmm. Everything. I don't I don't say no to anything, which also makes me susceptible to fall for stuff sometimes. Okay, and and for people and throughout this whole spiritual quarantine period that we're in um you know there's been lots of times where i have been pulled in directions and it's just you know it's been a real challenge just to keep getting up and keep doing this thing talking about this stuff because i feel compelled to talk about it um but you know what i'm seeing is like i get get these conflict we're all getting conflicted messages and everybody's going well, who do you trust? I don't trust, you know, you go on certain channels and you'll see, I don't trust this person because they once said this last year and I don't trust this person. And then you've got all these people who've collaborated who then fall out with each other because they're getting information from other people and then they start slagging each other off, Mm -hmm. whether it's literally or subtly. So everybody's just massively confused. Yeah. But it all comes down to in here and Mm -hmm. and resonations and that, that feet, that truth vibration. Um, so you know, even the even the discussion about flat Earth and and round Earth, even the discussion about Palladians and Arcturians, and you know whether whether there is space or there isn't space, whether it's a dome and all of this kind of stuff. I'm still, I'm I'm you know I'm not committing to either side of any of that, but the things that resonate because they both resonate with me, for example. So I don't know if that's like two different realities or whether the you know I'm just wrong about both of them. <laughs> Or partly right about both of them. Mm. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Because it's like, I don't know probably nearly as much, well, I don't think I know nearly as much about off-worlders as you two probably do, because I my experiences haven't been as much. But for me, it's quite interesting, because normally I've always been someone that's wanted to sort of use the right name, use the right terminology, and it's a bit like, an animal's an animal. I don't really care what their official name is because who made up that official name anyway? You know, it, it, it's it's like, I don't know. I'm, I'm really struggling these last couple of weeks to sort of express what I want to get out. But I suppose the overwhelming feeling is like, because so much of my reality has been based around time, has been raised around names based around it's this or it's that I still feel somehow we're almost missing the point in terms of talking about it in that language because that's the old language that we've explained it in before which isn't I've just got this feeling it's just not going to be relevant moving forward either that or I've just got senile dementia (laughs) I'm just going downhill rapidly could be a mixture of the two perhaps I'm just making excuses for myself but it's it's like the facts that people are talking about and getting hung up on don't seem important to me for some reason, and I can't work out why. Because they're not. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm the same. I've not. I've tried not to do any of the intel chasing as much as possible, mm. and and tried to talk to positive people and share stories, and that that kind of thing seems to be much more relevant. Um, but it's all frequency matching. You know, your audience is who needs to hear whatever you're putting out at the time. Um, but you know I, what you said about the language is really interesting because I was it dawned on me quite a few years ago that language in and of itself is a form of mind control because it's been yeah. created and it, we all know most people watching this will know uh, that legalese is a language of its own kind which sounds like and looks like English but it means completely different things which is how they've managed to hide common law from us and hide our rights through 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 language. 
so yeah i think you're right because it's it's um you know i mean the psychic shit i'm having at the moment is off the charts it's like 30 times a day and i'm going oh yeah i mean literally i just thought of that and then they've rung or this has happened and i was like oh, hang on i knew that was going to happen and it's really going through the roof i'm and getting telepathy like crazy Mm. Like, so I'm getting people I and I'll check with people and they're like, Oh, yeah, I was just thinking that like with people in my life, like I'm getting like, and it's, it's, and I know that's happened to me in the past, because I've had, all, I've had stuff happen to me since I was a little kid, but it's getting very strong, very strong. Yeah, I, I've been telling my daughter that where we're going, we're all going to be telepathic, telekinesis, levitation, and she turns around and goes, it'll be shit when you know what everybody's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but will it though? Will it really? Because this is so fascinating. We're going down this direction with the, we always talk about things that we think we're going to do this and we go, no, all links in. But, you know, Bryce, the conversations we were just having this morning with Shanti and Mornay, mm -hmm. Mark, we were just having a, a little round table and talking about how true friends you can have a really honest conversation with and give really honest feedback. And when it's coming from a heart space, then even if you don't like what you're hearing initially, you know they had your interest at heart and so you, at some stage you'll listen to it. And it's so funny because I've been speaking to you, Bryce, about how I've been so drawn to do something about the animal communication because loads of people are asking me to teach them how to do animal communication. But I've got this big stumbling point because it's not animal communication, it's just telepathic communication. And whether you're doing it to a goldfish, a Labrador or to you two doesn't make any difference. And it's funny because whenever I'm doing animal communication, supposedly with the clients, the clients will often say, well, are you tapping into the animal or me? And I'm like, it's all of you because all our energy fields are linked. And if your animal's got an issue, you're intrinsically, you know, affecting that. And it's funny your daughter saying, you know, be shit, you know, what everyone thinks. But all this bullshit would go, wouldn't it, if we really did know what it thinks. And actually, this is how animals communicate all the time. When you meet two dogs and the owners think they should get on and the dogs don't, it's because they're picking up the true essence of what they're really saying to each other, yeah. not the human interpretation of it. And there is none of this falsehood. There's none of this. Well, but my, my, my cat's been giving me telepathy lessons all day because she doesn't like the cat food that I've currently got. So, uh, and I, actually, I've got, I've, I've, somebody told me you teach people how to make good cat food. I, yes, I, I'll I send have, you that. Yeah, I should have said that off camera because it was a mental note to ask you. Um, yeah, and she's totally telepathic with me. Yeah. And, it's, and she's teaching me stuff all the time. It's amazing. Um, yeah. So, in okay. terms of, sorry, carry on. I was just say a funny story. I my dog uh, who was on uh, Catherine's diet plan as well. But I, one day he was acting really crazy. I didn't know what was going on. And so I have my pendulum board and I channeled his higher self. And I was like, what's going on with you? And he spelled P-O-O-P. -O -P. He had to go poop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's absolutely perfect. So. I thought he was going to say, like, we're ascending now. And he's like, no, I just got to go poop. So... <laughs> The, dog, the, the dog's grounding you. It's good. <laughs> it's go it's good. Any pet owner just spends their whole lives talking about poop. It's just our favorite yeah. conversation anyway. You can tell so much by it. But in terms of sort of some of your experiences, so we sort of hit on a bit last time, Mark, about your experience of seeing this amazing spaceship and things. So have you hmm. seen anything recently? Because you're saying the psychic stuff. Are you feeling anything coming through from... Well, um, I got told, um, I got, to, I got told, I don't want to repeat myself, but I got told by email by somebody that said, um, you don't know me, but they know that you look up every night. And I do, I do every single night. And I've, I usually see a white light doing something strange. I mean, this is like a UFO hotspot where I live. And when it's a clear sky, you, I always see something if I stay for more than 10 minutes, always. Right. But nothing, nothing super extraordinary, apart from in the last couple of months, nothing super extraordinary. But last year, there was quite a lot of things. And there was another one um, that happened. I, can, I was standing over there at a neighbor's house, and it was about 11 o'clock at night, and I was in the garden. And this, this thing was flying towards from that direction. And it was, it was big, and it was white, and it was low, and it was moving like a big bird. And I was like, what, the f what is that? And as it flew over, it 
it looked like what you would describe either as a dragon or a phoenix or something like that. It was a huge bird made of light. <laughs> That's the best way of describing it. And I had a witness. It wasn't just me. And I was like, was that was that a dragon? Was that what was that? And and also, um, it, I think it might have been. If you look at um, Gina Marie Colvin Hill, her YouTube channel, she put up a um, a dragon caught on CCTV camera uh, the other night. And also, the CCTV cameras that are outside uh, uh, the White House have captured plasma recently, and she captured lots of plasma. Uh, the satanic buildings in Dublin and in different places around the world, and I, you know, I get the feeling there's some sort of cleanup, yeah. uh, energetic cleanup going on. Well, um, that's the dragon thing is interesting because that's coming up a lot. Um, yeah. That that it that it, and I know that's the Kali energy from the Hindu. She's the dragon, um, and that also connects to the divine feminine as well. And we have this skewed views of what dragons are, but they're actually we all have one, and they're all they're fiercely protective. And um, so that's fascinating that you're see that people are start starting to actually see that. It's like it, it it sounds cliche, but it's like the veil is really thinning for everyone at this point. And I'm getting a big buzz as you're saying that. And what's coming to mind is uh, uh, Tolkien, right? So Tolkien was interviewed in Amsterdam in 1959, and he said in a radio interview that the Hobbit and the the, the Lord of the Rings was based upon the true history of the Earth. Mm. Interesting. Well, it is interesting, yeah, because there's all. The, I think he had access to all these books underneath the university. I think it was at Cambridge, um, which which had have you know. And there's and what fascinates me. I'd love to get. I'd love to get under the Vatican and see all those things that they've got right. under there. I yeah. mean, not the demons and children, but the books. You know, yeah, the books. Yeah, because there's so much. We just don't know anything. You know. Oh because no! It's so exciting. It's like. I just love the fact that we don't know anything because, as I said, I think most people watching this, that's why a lot of people have felt so out of place up until now because what we've been taught just has never made sense to us. It and crap. yeah, it's so great to me because, you know, people saying, expecting you to feel the opposite. I'm like, thank God, I'm really happy because I knew it didn't make sense. I've no idea what the answer is to most of it. However, I'm really excited to start finding some of this stuff out. It really is. And I've got loads of my sort of spiritual friends that are really, really connected to their dragons. Really. I want my dragon to be like Shrek's dragon because I want it to be half donkey, half dragon. It would be my ideal. Donkey! Pet. Oh, I mean, can you imagine? And I'd love to go flying on my dragon. Well, can well, I uh, Something, Sorry, something super fascinating and i don't even know where this is but, but um so i you know i started my journey a lot with the blood types because i'm o negative and i i have the long tongue i have the low body temperature the extra vertebrae and i always thought i would have like lizard in me that that was like reptilian because of the o negative and it connects to royal family but then i was told no you're not reptilian you actually have dragon blood in you Ooh. you just reminded me of something <laughs> I was like, oh, no, I'm going away. <laughs> I did leave. That was really funny. Uh, drag, dragon egg. <gasps> oh, wow. Uh, sent to me by a really amazing healer who oh worked God. with the royal family. Oh, that's wild. Mm. Oh I don't God. know if it is an I don't know what, you know, it's a crystal, obviously, but is it a drag? Is it an actual dragon egg? I don't know. Wow. I mean, that? I mean, um, I that's what's, I mean, everything we've been taught is such a load of crap in our schools. Like the true history, we're so, you know, and that's kind of what, when I go through the missing books of the Bible, like I've kind of come to the conclusion that the 12 tribes of Israel are galactic tribes. They're galactic. You know, the Lyran group is the house of Judah, which is the house of the lion, you know, which is uh, one of the oldest souls in the galaxy. They bring the Christ consciousness. Well, right. So about a year ago, I did a, I did an astral journey and, um, these these visions that are they're so powerful they 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 go into a little filing cabinet on their own because they're just so in extraordinary the the f when 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 the first lockdown started the the first vision i had was a minotaur it, it was it was a really powerful creature and it was like silver with red flecks and it was kind of looking at me out the corner of its eye going <laughs> like that like it couldn't do anything it was really interesting but then last year i did this astral journey and this lion this unbelievable beautiful golden lion appeared in my journey and i'd never seen anything like it and i felt it and it was 
I couldn't hold it for too long. I had to, I kind of collapsed, but it was just stunning. And, and then funnily enough, I was watching a series of films at the time that I'd never seen. My kids made me watch it. And it was the Lion, the witch and the wardrobe and mm -hmm. Aslam is Christ. And I never knew that. <laughs> JC, yeah. she, she told me that she said, that's Christ. And I was like, Oh, that's, mm -hmm. that's what that was. Yes. Yeah. Um, and when you re when you realize that, and you realize, yeah, you know, I always feel weird about talking about visions because people are like, yeah, well, did you have too much drink, or <laughs> were you were you on the wacky backy? No, it was just like a a real pineal gland vision, you know. And they're yeah. they're they're extraordinary, you know. Yeah. And yeah, that was one of the highlights of last year, actually, which just came back to me when you said, mentioned it. Well, it's it, well, I when, the more I've studied this, it's like so the Lyran group is the House of Judah, which is the House of the Lion, which brings the Christ consciousness. They're the oldest, one of the oldest galactic groups. That's why they take responsibility, and their coloring is like a golden orange. Well, what did they call Mister T? Orange mm. and bad. All of a sudden, his coloring started changing, and we're noticing that with a lot of other people in the community that their coloring is starting to change. And that's what someone told me is going to start to happen. We think about the flags of the 12 tribes. It's not an actual flag. It's markings that you carry depending on where you We're all really star seeds, like where your D your galactic DNA hails from what your mission is here. And I just thought that was so freaking fascinating because I mean, look at Trump's hair, you know, the way it's, it's like, what are they telling us? What's what, what, and also, you know, the, the, the rise of the Magdalene coming back. That's why I'm doing my series because she was also the Christ consciousness. It one couldn't exist without the other, but they inverted that and they made the Baphomet and, you know, made her a, a sex worker. And, um, you know, it's just all these things are starting to like make actually, even though the true story seems to be so much more fantastical, it actually makes more sense than the garbage they, they gave us. Do you think this is why some of us feel that we're meant to be in animal bodies? You know, we Bryce and I always joke because I've always felt that I was meant to be in an animal's body. <laughs> and of course, everyone jokes and says, Oh, you're obviously going down the evolutionary scale then. But in all seriousness, it it there's a lot of people that feel like that. Um I've got so, a really I've got a really bad joke there. I'm trying not to say it. I won't go say on, it. say it. Go on, you've got to say it. No, no, oh, no, possibly not. I think I might know where you're going. With you that. Might, no, you don't want to do that. No, you don't want me to do that. It, it's something to do with Welsh sheep farmers, but nothing. nothing. Yes, yes, I can imagine. Yeah, perhaps not. Perhaps for the off show one, for yeah, the yeah. uncensored cuts at the end and everything. Right. But it is funny. It's like, and what I would love, I just wish you'd got that dog you keep talking about, Mark, because what I find really fascinating is when you have these visions, to see how your animals react to it. So I've been out, I'm really lucky because my horses are down the bottom of the garden in a beautiful field and I go out there really late at night to go and check them. And quite often I think I'm seeing things up in the sky and, and it's not necessarily, it's not as clear as what you're saying. It's not necessarily as divine, but I can see these things. And then I'm looking at my animals and they're just completely carrying on as normal. You know, there's no change of behavior for them or anything which is really fascinating um which shows that they're very very comfortable yeah. with whoever up there because you know horses prey animals herd animals they'll react straight away if there's something that an energy there that they they don't want to be or they don't feel safe with yeah as well, i said they see it all don't they mm. it's normal for them yeah, I mean, I, I had a I had an experience like that last year um, when I looked up, and it was like I could see thousands of sh ships in 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 the sky, and then I was like, "Am I really seeing that?" And I was like, "It was like I, they were half there and they were half not there." And there's nothing, you know. I wear glasses for reading. There's nothing wrong with my mm. eyesight, um, and I, I think that you know, this is the veil, the veil mm. um, dropping. We we are all like, we're basically just describing the veil dropping. Yeah. It's funny, the other day I was, I take a salt bath every night and um, I usually read like a, a fiction murder mystery just to relax. That's, that's how I relax my mind is murder mysteries. Um, but I was in the bath and all of a sudden I had this, what I called a vision. And then I spoke to Taylor about it and I described what I saw and she was like, girl, you had a memory. And I was walking down this hallway with another person, what I would describe as a person. And there were these beings standing along the hallway and we got to this room and we had to sit in these chairs and like look at each other and strap down almost like execution style. And all of a sudden we dropped. It was like this light open and we dropped. And I told her, I was like, the feeling I had was immense dread. I did not want, but they were like thanking, they're like bowing to us and thanking us as we were walking. And she goes, that's, that's common. That's a common memory of when you actually came to this earth. 
you drop through the portal to take life. And that dread you were feeling is because you knew you weren't going to remember, you know, how can that's, that's the, the mission we were on is like, how do you come here and complete this mission? But yet, you know, going back to third density, it's the thickest density. You're not going to remember anything, you know, about why you're here, who you're here with. So, um, and I thought that was wild that she said that when she does her quantum sessions, that that's common. Like you sit down and you go through like this light appears and it's like a whew, down into the, the new life that you're taking. You, you reminded me when I was early on my channel, <clears throat> I got invited on to Michael Jaco's show mm -hmm. and he was talking about the secret space program. And suddenly I'm in the middle of this show and he's saying to me, yeah, you, you're in the secret space program. And I'm like, shit, I'm live on air. I'm, uh, what am I going to say? Because uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't remember anything about that. I don't profess. I don't go around telling people I'm in the secret space. I'm not. I don't think I am. But when I look at my life, it's really weird how when I came here. See, I even said came here instead of born. <laughs> when I came here, I had a very strong desire to fly, and I became a pilot. That was my first job. Mm -hmm. And everybody, everybody said it was not possible for me to do that because I was a council house kid. And it, it, how could you be a pilot? And but I did, in in the in the military, and I always found that really interesting that, yeah. um, that I did that. What about of all this stuff? You know, we're we're very quite understandably obsessed with what's going on in Canada, what's going on with the royal family, what's going on with this global events. What if it's all irrelevant? You know, we we talk all the time. Bryce and I talk so much about so many different things. I'm like, I forget what's on camera and what's off. But again, we were talking this morning, Bryce. It's it's like, what if? Because we were saying, how do you get from where we are now to sort of where we think we want to be? At least the first step of where we want to get to be with so many different levels of awareness and everything, and perhaps all this human politics, royals crap perhaps it's just completely irrelevant but because perhaps this is all going to come in and just surpass all of it i i think it served its purpose like the whole what's happening here in the united states with mr b mm. um with with the with with the royal family i think it served its purpose in the beginning to help nudge us awake because we did the work and the research but i agree i think right now there's something bigger there's something mm. way bigger that's happening than just a democrat or a republican you know, there are way bigger. And I don't know if it's just the um, the rate in which each soul is able to take those leaps that they have to still keep playing out this more um, matrixy st type stuff to wake people up while, you know, to get them to a certain point. You know, like you have kids who are in the 11th grade and kids who are in the third grade and they all have to kind of go at their own rate. But yeah, I don't it's not I'm kind of getting I'm kind of getting bored of like the politics and bored of all that. The royal family yeah. is bored because that's boring. Like, let's talk about the galactics. Let's talk about who we really are. Like, why is it since I was a little kid, I have the experience demonic, like literal red eyes on me, waking up with scratch marks all over me since I was a freaking child. And even uh, partners have seen me get scratched live. Like seeing like just seeing scratch marks go, why am I getting attacked? What don't tell me this crap isn't real because I'm, I've got, I've got the wounds to, to prove it is. Why am I being targeted? Why are other people like you, Mark, or you, Catherine, experiencing things when other humans aren't? What, what is our mission? Who are we? You know, that's kind of where I am now. Tell me. I want to know because this stuff, this stuff you told me was not real 20 years ago is now looking pretty effing real right now. Yep. It's 100% real. Mm -hmm. And you said you wrote one of the first things you were saying, Mark, today was about um, levitation and things. Now, I've always... Ever since I can remember, whatever age, I was very, very young, I've always thought I can levitate. And it's one of the most frustrating things that I'm still sitting here on the chair. I want to be whizzing around this room whilst I'm talking to you. And, but I know I can, but there's something I can't at the moment. But, you know, so let's get on to the really good stuff. You know, let's let's really get on to the you know the good stuff. I I don't know. We're all saying that, that. I mean, I hate the date sort of thing, but it does feel to me that something completely different is just going to eclipse all of it and everything. And I love I love Earth as it is. I love my walks in the woods with my dogs and my horses and my cats and things. So um, so it's not that I don't like what I'm seeing at the moment, but it just seems like there's somehow we're missing the point and i wonder if that's the delay 
<laughs> I, I, believe, I believe in miracles. Mm. I think something miraculous is going to happen. Mm. Like, said this would be biblical. What does biblical mean? Mm. How do you interpret that? And, you well, know, I... Sorry, Bryce, go on. No, I, the other night when my friend was channeling a very important figure, I won't say who, but she's a channeler. And um, he, because we had some questions about the book of Revelation, because um, we know our timeline is off. We're not at the apocalypse. The apocalypse was the fall of Atlantis, which did not happen as long ago as we think it happened. Mm. When Christ, this is going to, I know this is going to piss a lot of people off, and I'm just going to say it because the tr we got to get to the truth about this. Yahshua. The person we know as Jesus Christ was never crucified. That's a Luciferian rewritten story. Mithra, it's the Mithra story. He lived for a thousand years with the Magdalene as they brought the thousand years of peace of Christ consciousness. And then they left again. We talked about Tartaria with the buildings and all of a sudden people. We talked about this morning where there was no people. And all of a sudden people were back again. That was the release of the Draco of the darkness again. And thus where we are here now is we're at the final, final battle where we're now going to ascend into a higher density earth. And I agree with you, Mark. There, if this is this is a this is about this isn't about politics, medicine, education. This is about our souls. This is about our spirits. This is about our the magic that we carry. And so if, if people have to fully understand that, there's there's gonna have to be a God moment. There's gonna have to be something that stops everyone dead in their tracks. So he said that um the flood of Noah that we talk about Noah's flood was the flooding of Atlantis. And there will be another flood, but it's going to be vibrationally. It's going to be a vibrational flood that will knock you off your feet. It's basically coming from the heart center. And our earth will start to look different as far as we're going to see different colors. This is going to sound so bad. And I forgive, forgive me for saying this, but if anybody's ever done shrooms, um, the trees like vibrate. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Mm. It's beautiful. And so that kind of sounds like what we're going to see things more. Um, spiritually more galactically i think we're going to have a different relationship with the animal world it's not going to be like it is now there's not going to be separation um and so and that's what's kind of and, and i don't know what the hell that's going to happen i don't know what that's going to look like i have no fucking clue but um but i think you're right i think there's going to be like this god moment that comes in that we would call a miracle that stops human beings in their tracks and maybe that brings back some of our memories i think some of us are already having some of our memories coming back but i think that's going to start to slowly bring back people's awakening as to who they truly are i agree and said the best is yet to come mm. and i believed him i believe him 100 percent. and i i there was a, there was a time in the last there's been times in the last year that i've gone i can't believe i wrote a poem called the best is yet to come what if i'm wrong <laughs> <laughs> but i put i shared it again last night because i i was like I, I listened to it and I was like, I'm I'm a hundred percent convinced of what I've written here and what this is about, and it and it is, and it, you know, the, is going to be studied the you know, new Bible. You know, mm -hmm. it's going to yeah. be studied. It's going to be studied for forever. Mm -hmm. And um, the, some of the people that I've met in this journey, the the insights that they've had, uh, is, you know, and it's really about your. It's all about digging deep into that red like you, you know you're fearlessly f looking for the truth bryce and, and when you say things like cruz wasn't cru crucified i go that makes sense absolutely it makes sense because yeah. why would you put that uh, in a church <laughs> you know why why, why would you it used to terrify me as a kid i was like i'm seeing a man being murdered what why, mm. what it doesn't make any sense it looks just like their rituals yeah that's their absolutely. ritual yeah yeah not so, ours that's why you know i share Catherine's excitement because um uh, thank god that um all of this i mean you know all of this is nonsense everything we've grown up with is nonsense i mean somebody asked me the other day how, how do you homeschool your kids and i said well it must be really difficult and i said well only if you're trying to replicate what they're doing in schools right now if yeah. you actually think of it from a different point of view and think well what's it take to actually educate a child what does the child want? Mm. What does the child like? And what do they don't like? And and it's a much more relaxed way of doing things. And now my son's churning out JavaScript and Photoshop at the age of 11 instead of learning some obscure load of bullshit Irish history in, a, in this prison cell of a school that he was in, you know? And and it's like people people just like, how, how can you do that? How can, I haven't got the time to do it. I haven't got the energy to do it. It's actually pretty easy. 
yeah. you know and a lot a lot of these things in the way that we're going to be redoing everything are actually fairly easy life is easy really i'm saying that at the same time holding the two things together i just watched a i just watched a harrowing video of a man talking about the fact that he gave his child this two weeks ago and two weeks later heart attack gone and, uh, and I'm like, I, I need this to end now because I can't, I can't witness. Yeah. I mean, I felt so sorry for the child, but also then for the guilt that he's feeling. And it's like, how much more of this? Have we, re you know, is this really necessary, God? But God did say to me when I was three or four years ago, you've got to be willing to let go of everything mm -hmm. if you're going to carry on with what you're about to do. And that's what I got very clearly. And letting go of everything means everything in order for things to be back in balance that surrender is the feeling i get yeah yeah that's heartbreaking when you hear stories like that with kids too especially um i'm very lucky my sister my sister's awake so my niece my nieces and my nephew are not you know i'm lucky that because i know it's got to be rough for the whole family involved just to see that happen you know but um but um and th i know there's a lot of questions people have you know about why they're they're continuing this charade you know, not putting a stop to it. And there has to be a bigger reason that we're just not seeing. And I, and I don't think it has, you know, and I know from, from the context that now I'm having with the Palladians, I, I, I know that there's just so much we, we don't understand because we haven't, because there has been a very thick veil that this isn't just about earth. This is, this is, there's so many different levels to this involved in this battle. And, and I think that that part of our changing our history was so that we would, we would be um, ignorant to everything that's happened in 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 not just our plane of reality but all planes of reality whether that's above us or out extended beyond us wherever that is um you know it's even i mean i'm i love history and i i love studying history to kind of figure out what we've missed but i discovered this map and you know from the beginning okay well every president should put their people first it's kind of like what a president should do you know, but then you go deeper into it and there's this freaking map out there that shows the American continent was actually like the Middle East mm -hmm. where I live is Egypt. And then so I dig deeper and I'm, I'm we're pulling information. I'm going to the Gospel of Mary again. And they, you know, the story is they found in Cairo. But now we're learning. No, the true story is they found that gospel here in the state of Georgia. And they moved the artifact to even confuse us about where things actually happen. And so I'm starting to speak at uh, Mr. T, if you're watching this, can you elaborate on why you said America first? What's going on with this continent? What's, uh, we know Atlantis, uh, Atlanta, like we know there's something about the Atlantis possibly being here, but then we know our, our, everything was connected at one point. So what is the, what's the magic behind this land? Where did everything really happen? Because I think, and if, if it happened, not where they said it happened, then why did they change the location? You know, it's, and I, you hear this idea of like crystal grids below us. So there's all these crystal grids, which you know what, if there are cities below us, then why not there be crystal grids below us that are going to start to emerge and come back out of, um, out of the ground. You know, I know there are pyramids beneath Georgia. We know that there are pyramids under Georgia. Why? And why? There's a, there's a crystal, crystal pyramid in Bermuda that's huge. Under, mm. under the water crystal mm. you know why did why do all those ships and planes disappear around there exactly exactly and anyone who's been i mean i you know to see the mayan temples in belize and guatemala and everything i mean it's just unbelievable and you know it's just fantastic and also in belize seeing how the way the wildlife reacts to them and everything is just incredible but also what really fascinates me is uh, is almost not just why do they lie about that but why is it significant now right here obviously, right now if you it is. Me, because it is obviously yeah. very significant and when you look at everything you know we talk so much at the moment about soil health and everything well anyone who <laughs> wants to look after the planet and their body does but yeah but look how significant that is because you know what anything that's going into the soil is also going into whatever's beneath the soil soil which certainly isn't what we are you know why are they so against a lot of the mining well you know it's it's all linked in isn't it you can see how all these oh what tangled web you weave when first you practice to deceive yes um you know all these things that when you start seeing one you think well no wonder they don't want us to do that no wonder they don't want us to do this no wonder they don't want us to keep carrying on with these practices because the more you look you're going to find something yeah 
And my question is, what what is Mar-a-Lago on top of? That's mm. my question right now. Why is Mar-a-Lago so significant? We know it's like the second White House, but what's it on top of? That's where I go now is like, why, why that piece of property? Why that land? You know, when, here in the Southeast where I live, um, we have what we call these Indian uh, burial mounds from the mm. Cherokee, the Creek, and you can drive by them. They're, they're, they're supposed to be graves where they would stack all these bodies, but they're giants. Mm -hmm. They're not people like us. Same here. They're mm. giants. Yeah, I was about to say, there's a place down here near a lake called the Sleeping Giant, and it is a, a giant. Sleep, yes. right? there are there are there are there's, there's a road down here i drive down it and there's this big piece just cut out of the hillside i mean once you understand that the grand canyon was actually excavated by a giant machine the the the, the mountain um the devil's mountain in america and, and cape town they're giant tree stumps once you understand once you see that you can't unsee it and they're no. everywhere they're all over the world and this this is just this is what drives me nuts because i'm like the Giant's Causeway here in Ireland, right? If you've never been, it's extraordinary. Have you ever been, Catherine? Yes, I have. And we've got the Devil's Punch Bowl near where I am as well, and which is just like a great big footprint. <laughs> so, you know, and all in plain sight. Look at what they call it. But it, it, it's, it, it, I think it's really fascinating because we talked a few months ago about Don't Look Up, the film. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't Look Up. When you, when you change your perspective of the way you look at things everything changes and we've been so drummed into us just to look at it from one perspective and you just look at it from a different angle a different view and then suddenly you see something completely different what well, when i studied my first started because one of my channel uh, subscribers wanted me to look into the nephilim and the giants and at first i was like i don't really want to do this but then when i started getting into it i was like holy shit like they, so what, another thing that they, they have giants that are still in stasis, which from what that means to me is they're like under anesthesia, but they're still alive. And one of the, um, one of the things that I read was that this dark group was going to actually wake them up and have them like bop out of their graves. I mean, literally there are Indian burial mounds, like an hour North of me. If they were to do that in a giant, a 25 foot freaking giant were to start running down I-75, Atlanta's gone. You know, and and then you, I was looking into uh, Gil, is it Gilgamesh? Was that the giant um, from the Middle East? The mm -hmm. Iranian War, they had mm -hmm. found his grave, and he was in stasis. And it, there's mm -hmm. all these emails from sending troops to like remove Gilgamesh. Mm -hmm. And then there's a the big one in the Afghan caves, and there's videos of the soldiers fighting that guy. And there's the big giant red haired ones in Russia that are that are in um stas not stasis, but that, well, something like that. Um Well look at Sleeping Beauty. They did it mm. to her. Mm. <laughs> all in plain sight. But no, in all seriousness, you know, they, it's so easy, isn't it? We know that they've been doing it um you have to be careful how I say this. We know sometimes when a baby's born and they think it's been born dead and it hasn't been and things like this is uh, so so many bits of the jigsaw puzzle put in together but coming back to where we started from i mean it's 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 like it's starting if we're having these conversations as we so many other people across the globe have oh, yeah. conversations yeah. so are we you know is the veil really getting to the stage now where it's so thin it's just about to lift how I you think so. Yeah. I think you, I mean, I know I have orbs around me all the time in my videos. Now people are commenting it. I'm seeing it when I'm editing. I know Catherine is, I know Mark, you probably are. I know like everybody's if, and if, and I said this on one of my videos, if you guys are seeing orbs around us all the time while we're filming, then guess what? They're probably around you too. We're yeah. just on camera because when I'm yeah. filming, I don't see it. It's when I'm editing that I see it. They're probably, you know, they're probably around you too. And, um, and the one thing I know from like the off worlders, the Palladians that I've been working with, they love us so much. Like it is an un, a, an unconditional and they're funny. They're funny. And they, they, they're, they're big too, you know, and they, they, they have so much love for humans. And, um, I know, uh, Taylor keeps saying that they keep wanting to thank us for those of us that are in this battle, because we have volunteers kind of like with the hunger games, I volunteer as tribute, like you know, that we volunteered to do this. And we understood, I guess that memory I've had, but understanding that I would forget everything to take this life. 
and to do this mission. And it was through the, through just mere faith and miracles on their own that we would wake up enough to be able to start this ball rolling. I know the law of one talks about the wanderers having to come back because the earth is destined to, to send a fourth density positive, but it needed people to come back or into whatever you call us when we're not in our people, human body to come back, to help push, push it forward um, to, to not, to not be taken down by the resistance of the, the, the negative, the negative polarity. So um I mean, I just don't, you know, this is what I think about too, like people who haven't uh, awoken yet to, to this reality, you know, they don't even know that the illness going around is, is not what it's cracked up to be. So how are they even going to handle the fact that our earth isn't what we think it is? Our history isn't what we think it is. There are freaking giants everywhere. There are probably there are fairies everywhere. They're there. You know, I did a whole thing on um, leprechauns as well. And yeah. it's not folklore guys. Like it's just not like, I've seen them. I've seen them. I've seen leprechauns and fairies. And that's without the magic. I mean, everyone thinks this is water. It's obviously gin. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it is, it is funny. But I think a lot of people don't care either. I mean, I think a lot of people, I don't, they don't really care about a lot of these things. I mean, they might care if a, cow, a giant comes and picks them up and eats them. That, that's um, the thing that's always amazed me because I've I've always cared about this stuff since I was mm -hmm. a kid and I couldn't understand why nobody else gave a shit. And, yeah. you, know, you know, like, I you know, I'll go out, I went out and filmed a load of uh, elementals and ships uh, not far from here. And, I, you know, it was like two days out of my life. It cost money to do, it was, you know, and I'm doing it just because I want to show people. But even the cameraman, while we were there, who was looking at them, couldn't see them. No. I mean, he could see them, but he just couldn't compute what they were. And I was like, don't you think this is amazing? He was like, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not completely convinced. I went, they're right there. <laughs> what do you mean you're not convinced? But that it, happens in all aspects of our lives, don't you think, Mark? I mean, it's like, you know, people that have thought you can't talk to animals or people that don't believe in ghosts, whatever. We've all got mm. something that we can see, and particularly the children. We come back to it the whole time, but, you know... How many children have their imaginary friends and yeah. mm -hmm. happens all the time and yet adults can't see them. Yeah, I mean, everywhere is everywhere is haunted down here in the South. I went to a private school in third, fourth, and fifth grade, was in this old plantation house um right outside of Atlanta. And um Sherman, when he came through to burn down Atlanta, he actually stationed himself mm -hmm. at that house. Mm -hmm. And when he stationed himself at, at that house, he actually um killed the family that lived there and there was like a 12 13 14 year old daughter that they hung from the balcony after they rap'd her um of course and i remember as a kid we would see her all the time hanging and my i have a friend who's very logical very very grounded one of my best friends from childhood and third grade was upstairs and she has even to this day at 39 years old she still has this 30 years 30 years she's had the same memory she left something upstairs in her cubby so her mom pulled up she went upstairs got the got her book or whatever was coming back down the stairs and she says to this day two hands pushed her and she tumbled down the stairs and still to this day at 39 years old she's like no i was pushed i remember mm -hmm. feeling that sensation of the hands pushing me and and yeah and down here in the south you have that as well every we our shawl is haunted we have a ghost in our shawl I talk to him every day um but yet people still can't, and even in the South, when people believe in ghosts, they still have a hard time like believing in extraterrestrials or the fact that like, it's not just us out here, you know, that, that, or that there could be history could be manipulated or there could be crystal grids under the ground or, or the, even, even in the churches, even in the, in the Bible that we have, they talk about the Nephilim and yep. the giants, yep. but yet yep. you're not going to believe that that's actually a giant's grave. Because it's all it's all very convenient with the Bible. They just say, yeah, it's, it's it, one minute it's uh, literal, the next minute it's um, it's uh, figurative. But um, you yeah, know, twenty eight thousand year reigns of kings in the Bible. You know, and the eight hundred books are missing. However, yeah. seven hundred and seventy. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, but you just reminded me when I was about five years old, I was mowing a lawn for a, a woman in a very posh house, and and it was middle of the day, and out of the window. There was a woman there, a young woman with very, very long blonde hair, just combing her hair. And I had to, I can feel it now. It was, you know, when you get, you know, that ghost feeling you get. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah. I had that feeling and I was frozen to the spot and she didn't belong in the house. 
Mm. She she didn't exist, and I had to call somebody and said, "There's a girl upstairs," and they was like, "Don't be ridiculous," because the only the only other kids there were like four, two and three years old. So yeah, they all come back, and there was like, there's just tons of them, dead dead horses in the road that weren't there five minutes later. Uh, there's I've got hundreds of them. They, I just we should write them down. I mean, then, Gettysburg. Um, look at all. If you can, if people watching, you can Google "ghost at Gettysburg." Mm. People have just taken pictures of like soldiers walking. Mm. From the yeah, well, I, I I got um I got mentored about ten years ago by a guy who whose job was to go he he for thirty years he'd been going around removing all these souls that were trapped in battlefields and he told me about when he he had to clear the uh, field at the Battle of Hastings from ten sixty six and he said that there were thousands of soldiers there that just wandering around and the, and the, and he had to clear them and his it, that was part of his job and through through the last. 10, 20 years. I met loads of people. One person I met whose job was to activate all these uh, crystal schools all over the world. And that was part of their job. And, and I was meeting these people when I wasn't anywhere near as awake as I am now. And I'd be like, what the f what are who are these people? Um, but they, you know, they taught me loads of stuff and they, they equipped me for now, mm. you know, because they taught me lessons. I didn't even realize that I was being taught. Yeah. We well, you know yeah. what's funny too is I've realized too because I can handle a ghost like I like I said I grew up in the yeah. south like I can handle a ghost, but I've realized now that there are people in my life that can astro travel, and they're coming to me, and that's when I get a little freaked out because you're astro traveling, you're not a dead person, you you actually have decided to come to visit, and um and the other night I was asleep and I saw myself flying. And I ended up in somebody else's house, and I woke up the next morning and I talked to my friend Taylor, our friend Taylor, and I was like. I think I went somewhere last night and she's like, Oh yeah, that was, that's astro traveling. And I was like, I never really want to do that. <laughs> but you know, if, if it's, but that just shows you that the spirit, the essence of a human isn't just the physical body. And if we have access, if we learn to have access to that essence again, then our life looks completely different and nobody has power over us at that point, you know? Always oh, exciting, isn't it? It really is exciting. So, mm. I don't know quite where we go from there. Well, I was, gonna, I was gonna tell you a quick story. Last year, almost, no, in the last two years, sorry, um, almost every day, especially during the first lockdown, I found myself just going to bed at like ridiculous times, like 11 a.m. I'd, I'd just go to bed and I'd be gone, I'd be gone for two hours and, or at three o'clock in the afternoon or whatever. And then I thought, oh, is this just me getting old? And then I was like, but every time I did it, I woke up and I was, I had bruises on me. I was mm -hmm. stiff, sore. And then I had these really strong images of me with a big sword. And, and, and it all sounds like fantasy, but it was, I think it was real. I think it was doing some, I was doing work. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it feel if I relax, meditate, that feels more real than this life does. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have being in the quantum feels more real than being at the grocery store buying bread right now. Yeah. Same here. I mean, and I'm, and I'm sharing that for anybody that anybody yeah. this is having the similar sort of thing. Exactly. You're not, you're not alone. No. Nothing, because these sort of conversations are becoming quite norm in this community. Because, you know, I've been saying we, right from when we first started talking to us about how, you know, I wake up in the morning and I know I haven't got out of my bed at night and, you know, it hasn't said, and I've got like a swollen black and blue ankle where I've twisted my ankle and it's like, what then? Um, but it's quite normal in my family to this, but they sort of laugh. But I wish I'd learn how to, I'm a bit exhausted now, could do with the rest. You were well, saying yeah. ways, ways to do it. But I think there's so many people that experience this and, you know, we're starting to look at everything that, oh, that's just a dream, that's just this. Well, we don't know how much is a dream and how much isn't. Did I show you all this? I don't know mm. if I all this. So this was about a year ago. Um, I and this was like I did it. We I put it in black and white so you could see it. That's a bruise on like the side of my torso. I woke wow. up with that. I woke up with that. Mm -hmm. Like that was a big freaking bruise. Like I would have remembered if I had done something like that in my life. Mm -hmm. And I woke up with that. And I know. And I put it in black and white just to see if there was anything right written in my in my side. But um, but no. But it it was. I know it was an attack. Or or I was doing something like. I know that that's what that was from. And I kind of laughed at it because it, this is welcome to my life. You know, this has been my life since I was a kid. Um, and, and, and I want, and I know cause so many people comment on my channel too. Like if you are having these experiences, as Mark said, you're not alone and you're not crazy. Oh. No, you're not. Well, maybe some of them are uh, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> generally not. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, okay. Oh. We're all crazy. 
what's that quote from Alice in Wonderland? All the, like all the good people. Oh, go on. Wait, wait, wait. I'm a little bit, I can, I'm paraphrasing. I'm a, I'm a little bit crazy. That's okay. All the good people are, all the fun, are the, all the interesting people are or something. Yeah. There's like a quote about that. I was going to say, I, I like to believe three impossible things before breakfast. Mm. I like that. I mean, yeah. Alice in Wonderland, there's another rabbit hole, literally, <laughs> with the, with the uh, white rabbit. Yeah, absolutely. Adrena, That's Adrena just something. Brown. Yeah, you look into that. They just filmed, I think, a year or two ago, just before the lockdowns, up at our local estate, uh, the latest version of that, actually. And that was quite fascinating to see that in process. So, mm. but yeah, weird, weird, weird things. And all these people that think have got these amazing imaginations. Hmm. Mm. So, obviously not. But I quite like the thought, what you said, Bryce, that there's little. There's off-worlders up there that love us as much as I love my guinea pigs. Yeah. I'm quite happy to be their guinea pig. I mean, that's quite a nice consoling thought, isn't it? Yeah, it was when I, I mean, I found, I got in contact with my off-worlders through desperation because of a tracker that was in my neck and I couldn't eat and some black magic juju had been done. And and I was told that um, you need to, con you just need to tell them that you're ready because they, they, it's free will guys. Like they're, you know, they're taking you on ships without your permission and that's not the good guys. And so um, I sat on the edge of my bed that night and I was like, I need you to take me up tonight, but I don't want to remember because I'll crap my pants. Um, and I woke up the next morning and my neck was really, really sore. And I'm not, I am not a heavy sleeper. Like I sleepwalk, I have night terrors. Like I wake up, but that when I go, I know when I go up now, because I don't remember anything and I'm like dead to the world and I'll wake up. My neck was really sore. So I know they had done something and then I could eat the next day. I started to be able to eat again. Um, and then the next night I want to go up again. I said, well, let me remember just a little bit, just, just a little bit. And I actually remember being held and like rocked, just being rocked and held by a big, big Palladian man. Like just, but it was almost like I was a child, you know? And like my, my head was like by his like heart center and I was just being rocked back and forth. Um, but yeah, I'm not, yeah. So for people that have asked me, how do I make contact? You just can, you just have to like start talking to them. You know, they're, they're hearing you, but they don't want to scare you. The good, the good ones don't want to scare you either. Like they don't want to terrify you to the point where you're never going to want to do it again. You know, you're never going to want to like talk to them again or be open to seeing them again. So, um, so yeah. And now the more I do it, the more I can like hear them, the more I feel them around me, the more, you know, that telepathy started to get stronger with other people. So you know mm. exciting exciting so anything else you want to talk about mark well you know <clears throat> as bryce was talking about that i i had these um flashbacks not long ago of grays um me being operated on by grays on my brain and i remember once i woke up and there were there were four of them at the end of my bed around my feet and i was like the fuck are you doing here and then they they disappeared and i think if anybody um there's a really good film that everybody should go and watch called jupiter ascending have you guys seen that no and write it down so it was made it was made by the wachowski brothers stroke sisters whatever they are now and they they made um that film it was a flop but if you go and watch that film it's very interesting they've got they've got grays in there they've got draco in there they've got harvesting the human race for for blood they've got the whole the whole thing in there all about genes and everything else and it's about this waitress sorry it's not a waitress she's a cleaner called jupiter who uh happens to have the same genes as a queen that has passed on and uh it's very very interesting and kings that live for thousands and thousands and thousands of years it's got, it's got everything in interesting Definitely. Well, I'm, I'm out of time now, but it's, it's yeah, great. yeah. We've got to go. Oh my god, we'll have to do part, part three. <laughs> yeah, we, we can't keep calling it um, whatever you called it because it's not that well, anymore. I was thinking if you're ha okay with this, Mark, for my channel, for anybody that I know, a lot of my people have had paranormal experiences. If you have any questions for Mark, can they ask in the comment section, and we can present them at the next? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'm not the oracle or anything. I'm just a bloke. I'm just no, but you have bloke experience. Some weird, weird shit in my life. <laughs> yeah well they have like you know it, i think it helps you know it helps to hear when people have the same experiences so yeah. so anybody watching can ask those questions and i will share them with mark the next time we record yeah but so what, I, what, I, what i found is that most people have had experiences like yeah. this. they just put them to one side and get told when they're a kid to forget about that forget about that um but it, i think it's time to 
get all these things out now because that's where we're going. Yep. We are. We're already on the way. <laughs> Right, thank you so much, everyone. That was brilliant. And um, we will be back again to be continued, I think, yeah. this drama. Great to see you again. Thanks. Thanks. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.